This is Groove Talk with Froggy Style. Uh, welcome to another episode of Groove Talk, everybody. On this episode, I am on location at Market Collective, and I am joined by Colton and Jesse, and they are part of the band I Am The Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. I got, you got it, it all. Woo, awesome. did it. <laughs> so I guess uh, just to start off, why don't you guys like introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about the band and yeah. Awesome. Uh, just just uh, before we start, that noise you're hearing in the background is the lemonade family squeezed truck uh, just making delicious drinks. <laughs> Highly recommended. Very refreshing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's thanks for meeting us down here at Market Collective. Uh, I personally love Market Collective. I have like a lot of ties to Market Collective. I've worked for Market Collective. We've played Market Collective countless times, uh, oh, yeah. lots of times. So um, we just love supporting this place, and our friends' bands are playing this, and so this is a nice space. We're chilling on some custom artsy bean bags right now. Weekenders. And, and, yeah, the weekend is, and weekend it's just a it's a nice time. So, um, yeah, yeah. Market cool. Collective has always been what like the conflicts of so many different artists. You know, like that's that's what the whole point of it is. You know, like artisans and musicians, performers, everything, and all ages. Uh, yeah, all ages. I have to say that it's really given us a leg up. Like back when we first started performing together. It was like the place that I was the most excited to play because we would get actual audiences. We had a nice stage to play on. The sound was always good. So, yeah, no, they've they've been really good to us. So it's it's nice to be here, definitely. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so we have Keith Mueller and Robin and Silla. Robin Sillo, our our fearless trumpet player and drummer. They're dancing for us right now. So. And and they're they're about to go play the Market Collective stage with their other project, Natural Twenty, another great local band coming up in the scene and uh you know what we've been trying to start like a bit of a collective a little bit you know just with our with our bands and our friends and trying to support each other as much as we can and uh and help each other with connections and and help each other get different levels of shows and different types of shows and in, yeah it's yeah. been it's been pretty su sort of successful in a way in the like, music industry you need to be talented, definitely, but you also need to know the right people. So if oh, yeah. you know somebody who knows the right people, you skip so much time and effort trying to make those connections. It's all about networking. That, that's that's show business. So yeah, as, and that's New York. No, <laughs> that's New York. So uh, yeah, the more the more that we're able to help other people, the more I feel we give back to the scene. Rising tide, you know, rises all ships. That sort of thing. So it's yeah, yeah. And people have done so many favors for us over the years, and and as much as we can give that back, it's. It's it's really a, yeah it's our our pleasure I feel like a responsibility true. to do that in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Just even a side note to that, uh, a band just to shout out I'm probably going to shout out a bunch of bands, but Northern Beauties, one of my favorite local oh, Calgary yeah. bands. They're amazing. They've helped us out. They just like allowed us to play at Festival Hall like before we probably should have played there and just things like that right bringing you on to the shows at like Ironwood and like these nice beautiful shows um, and recently he just put his like the lead singer put his guitar up for sale and I was like I'm gonna buy that <laughs> like I like because I'm so inspired by them and just like want to like kind of show like pay homage to that Todd Stewart yeah. Todd Stewart and uh, so I bought his guitar I'm souping it up right now I'm going to pick it up after this interview <laughs> put a bridge on it get it set up properly it's going to be beautiful got a, yeah. got a fake a faux Bixby on it <laughs> yeah, it sounds the same you're good <laughs> yeah so I just want to throw that in there yeah that's awesome it's one of the things that I've definitely heard from a lot of different Calgary bands and stuff is one of the things that makes Calgary's music scene really unique is just the support for all the bands within it, you know? Yeah. There's there's not that like competition aspect, it's more kind of like a bunch of friends coming together and like supporting it's each other. It's collaborative, it's yeah. very collaborative to the yeah. point where like it's almost incestuous. Everybody <laughs> plays in, everybody plays in each other's bands. <laughs> Too so, much. Right? You see, you see somebody on stage, you're like, I don't know if it's this band or that band because they all have the same people in it. So it's, <laughs> it's nebulous. Oh, it's great though, yeah. Like I think that if you haven't ever really been a part of a music scene in another city, you wouldn't know no, yeah. but other cities are a lot more competitive. They are. Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's inherently better or worse, 
but it's different. Here, you feel supported. The second you step into the music scene here, you already have a built-in community, whereas in other cities, you have to, it's a meritocracy, you've got to earn it. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, like, I think it, the collaboration def definitely helps people get opportunities. Does it stifle creativity a little bit? I don't think so. Some might argue that it does because people aren't always trying to one-up each other and experiment and try different things, but there's a certain comfort and confidence in the music that happens here. Everybody really believes in what they're doing and everybody supports it. And, and the music that comes out of Calgary a lot of the time is very happy and honest and, and joyful. So even if it's like negative, even if it's emotional, even if it's about something that isn't inherently positive, there's a joy to it. There's a, and I, I really, really love that. That's, I don't know, being, being in the scene here for like the past decade and performing in other cities and doing other things, it's, it does set itself apart for that collaboration. So yeah, Market Collective is a testament to that sort of thing. Everybody here just supports each other too. So Yeah, and, and I've act, like our band's definitely been inspired by that mentality from other people, like we said, Market Collective, other bands, and and so at the point we're at now, when we get to actually help other bands and, and, and do other things for the music scene, it's it's a pretty amazing feeling. Like, I'm, I, I led a choir for Market Collective, and that was just a really amazing collaborative thing that we did with, like, fifth, like 45 random strangers, right, all singing together, and, and there was no pressure. And um, I'm starting to get involved with, like, certain music festivals in the city, uh, Frog Fest and uh, Circle Music Festival. Oh, cool! Uh, and just like you know, doing random things that are my personal skill set, like helping out with the organization of volunteers and emailing and like things that you know, not even music related, but it's just it's helping out the bigger community and the bigger idea. And and every member in our band is is contributing more than just our band, and that's that's pretty. I think that's a really amazing thing yeah cool that's like one of the things that i even noticed like i don't play in any bands but once i started doing this podcast and getting involved in the music scene here like it, it you know it just kind of like opened up its arms and like welcomed me in like yeah. there's been absolutely no negativity that i've experienced in the three years that i've been doing this podcast so because like, you are like actually a rare voice that's like like helping musicians to share their voice, right? Like, yeah. There's there's not a lot of podcasts in the city. There's not a lot of people that dedicate it to music and and just the scene in general. So, uh, yeah. That that's, thank you for being yeah, an advocate. Thank you. Thank we you. need people like you. So. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we all know that artists are great at promoting themselves and are so so. <laughs> we we love being I'm getting in better at it. Yeah. yeah. But it, it is weird. We're and not tough. introverted at all. No. Oh. Yeah, it's hard enough for like it, it's so, it's actually such a relief for me to be able to like hype other people up because I'm so bad at hyping myself up. Like I'm the same way, right? I'd way rather talk about somebody somebody else and everything that they've accomplished than yeah. Like whenever I have to write an artist bio about myself, I'm like, oh, I've done nothing. I don't deserve to be mentioned anyway. No. Yeah. yeah. It's, but it's it is. Yeah. It, I'm getting better at it, and, and so people like you. But you're also you're also involved in like creating soundscapes for poetry. And, and projects like that. You're doing um, Foley art for like weird soundscape projects in other bands. Yeah, I compose you, you work short at, a, films, at a musical cafe that, that has live music every night. Like, you're, you're very involved too. So it's, it is weird to self-promote, but it is amazing when you look, when you step back and look at all the little things that we're doing to help contribute. Mm -hmm. We're just like, yeah, like, this is a bit tangential, but yeah. there's a there's an analogy I like to use as far as like if you're feeling like you haven't been making progress with any endeavor you've been undertaking, I I, I equate it to being on a ship. You don't always feel it moving, right? But when you look behind you, you can see the wake. You can see how far you've come. You know the land has disappeared. You've actually made progress. And sometimes as, as an artist, that's what it feels like. You know you don't always know what forward progress looks like or feels like until you look back and see everything that you've done. So a message to any aspiring artists out there is that it's happening whether or not you know you feel like it is. So long as you're putting effort and intention into it, you're, you're going to make progress. And that's I've, something that I've had to learn. I've thought about that a lot. And, and I decided a little while ago, I think like seven years ago, and I'm lucky I, I thought about it seven years ago. I was like, if I put in a, a minimal amount of effort into this thing every day, like just like 20 minutes a day or like oh. even five minutes a day or maybe an hour some days, like, but don't like hold myself to any tight constraints. Like 
And then, yeah, like Jesse said, you look back over the seven years, you're like, man, I, I know how to finger pick on guitar now. Like, yeah. I, I know how to uh, do a little run with my voice. Like, I'm slowly improving on skills because I'm putting, like, focused effort into it. I understand the circle of fifths. I know what, uh, you know. Not like quite it. yet. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll I'm get still there. learning that. We'll get there. Um, but, yeah, you know, we, like... Some members of our band have been in the trenches lately, you know, trudging through in, in different ways. And so um, to get opportunities like we're getting now, you know, we got that email. We're, we're playing Folk Fest this year. Oh, wow. We were, we were floored. We, like, couldn't believe it, you know. That's something, some like a dream of ours that we've worked hard towards. And We are on camera saying that that is our dream as well. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, you know, it's like it, I volunteered there so many years, like, watching artists. It's just, like, such a crazy feeling to be able to play that festival. But, yeah, it, it definitely lifts you out of those trenches a little bit. You're like, oh, gosh. That validation. We, we seek that slightly bit. Right? Yeah, you you need it a little bit oh, as yeah. an artist. Like, you, you got to. I yeah. think. Those, like every small comment you get, you're just like, yeah. Yes. Oh, you get an Instagram <laughs> comment. You're like, oh, thank God. Like, <laughs> thank you I for today, noticing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> someone mentioned at a show. They're like, what was that? What was that one song that had that one lyric? And they said the lyric in it. They're like. And I'll say it on on tape. It's like keeping it alive is hard in these times. I was like, oh my gosh, man, that's the new song we're writing. Like, thank you so much for, for saying that. It. Like, yeah. wow, you don't know how much that made my day. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just because he like paid attention to the lyrics and and cared enough to say something, right? So yeah. even that validation is like, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, as human beings, it's like inherent to our nature, right? Like, even if we even if we proclaim that we're doing it just for ourselves, any sort of positive affirmation. <laughs> goes a really long way like like when I was really struggling with myself it was those the the gradual compounding affirmations that I would get from the people around me that would help lift me out and make me actually like see myself honestly not through that that veil of negativity that can be so easy sometimes so as we've touched as we've touched on before our whole goal right now as a band is both to grow ourselves as a brand but also we're now uniquely positioned to help people who were us just a couple of years ago try and find their leggings to try and find you know some sort of like uh, some some a path to follow or like some scaffolding to climb instead of figuring figuring it all out for themselves because like uh, do you, can you imagine like I don't want to like put a hypothetical situation out there but can you imagine how much further ahead we'd be if we had some sort of mentor when we first started instead of just trying to figure it all out however could you imagine how much further behind we'd be in so many cases oh. if if whatever else if things if things happen if we are where we are right, right. like you, you yeah. can hypothesize so. all you want you know throw like if I didn't meet you in like the most random <laughs> circumstances <laughs> should we tell the story and and like and we had this like incredible bond you know it, the band I wouldn't have become a better musician and no. the band wouldn't have so. I probably wouldn't have gotten back into the music scene right like, yeah, you like can, serendipity goes along okay are we telling the you, story you could share how we right. met it's a pretty good story <laughs> okay, it's, it is a pretty good story okay so four years ago it was wow, a, maybe, maybe, yeah. It was like four and a, four and a, no, more than four and a half years almost ago. Five. Almost five years ago. We, um, so I was attending this outdoor arts festival. Nuit Blanche. Nuit Blanche. For those of you who cool. know what that is, very it's chic. very cool. <laughs> uh, there was one exhibit in particular that was a spotlight shining into the middle of Stephen Avenue with the intention of people stepping into the spotlight and performing whatever they wanted to perform. Poetry, dance, act a scene out, sing, whatever you want. People were doing all sorts of things. Um, I stumble across this and I'm like, I want to do something. And, and impulsively, without even thinking about what I wanted to do, I step into the spotlight and the first thing that comes to mind is I'm just going to have a very stoic expression on my face, emotionless, and I'm just going to very deliberately start taking my clothes off, <laughs> folding them and placing them on the ground in front of me. And I go through this whole process down to my underwear. I leave my clothes in a pile on the ground and I walk around, the, I just walk out, I walk, walk around, around the block. The corner, yeah. <laughs> and everyone, like a huge audience by this time, they're up there, like, <laughs> like everyone's like, amazing, amazing. <laughs> it's art. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know, but it's great. It's really cool. <laughs> so I, I come back and, and I, and I get my clothes and I notice that one of my shoes is missing and 
I'm a little distraught. I'm like, okay, somebody took my shoe. I'm gonna have to go the rest of the night without a shoe. And my friends were like, hey, hey Jesse, you see that girl standing there very coyly with her arms behind her back just outside of the spotlight? You should go talk to that girl. I don't know why, maybe you should. <laughs> and this is still kind of a part of the performance. Like people it, are still watching yes. and like this yeah. is still... So... It was cool. We're just outside the circle. I, I walk up to this girl. We look at each other and we step into the spotlight and she goes, Hey, and I'm like, hey, and she goes, you want to come to my art show? I'm like, sure. <laughs> you want to give me my shoe back? Okay, and the audience is like, give her the shoe! <laughs> give her the shoe give back! Shoe. <laughs> so I get the shoe back, people applause, you know, and scene. It was great. Uh, I never end up going to her art show. No, but that was a friend of mine, uh, Natalie Slaba, amazing Amazing artist. artist. Like, like one of the most incredible surrealist artists you'll ever see. Think like, Salvador Dali, yeah. but with more contemporary twists yeah. on it. It's so good. Beautiful colors. Yeah, like she, she painted the head of my banjo as well. <laughs> and so I was just hanging out with her, and, and that's how I met Jesse and found out he played bass. We were looking for a bassist. It was just kind of like the Again, perfect serendipity. Match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very. He yeah invites me to play a show with him. Next thing I know, I'm going on tour with them, and I'm a part of the band. And I had been out of the music scene for a number of years at this point. You know, like going through a period of heavy self reflection, like battling major depression, discovering that I had clinical like anxiety and whatnot, and and just really you know in, in, in going through the process of ga gathering the, the tools to to deal with this and learning about myself and meeting Colton and joining this band helped me. In in so many different ways. It's that positive affirmation. Colton wanted me to be a musician in a band, right? He wanted me to come on tour, wanted me to like start recording material with him. I was like, this is what I've been waiting for for a few years. And yeah, you helped me out a lot. So yeah. Yeah, it was, it was amazing because I had been in a band previously, like the members. It was great, we were all friends and it was, it was really nice just being in a band and making music. Um, but, I mean, looking back on it, there was just so much, like, secretive, secretiveness and, okay. like, uh, people just building emotions, not saying anything about it, getting frustrated and, like, just building, building, right? Like, Unspoken resentment is oh, toxic, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Oh. And, and you don't notice it in the moment, right? Yeah. And then you fall apart and you're like, what happened? <laughs> and then you meet Jesse and you, like, are open and talk about it and you're like, oh... That makes sense. Like, you really have to be open and honest with your bandmates. And you have to have clear communication and, like, like you know, someone needs to be, like, leading that in a way, but you also need the full support of the band. Too. I'd say that extends to any relationship. Yeah. Right? I, I, I bands are complex, but... Any, bands are, bands are like, a, a family that's both, in some ways, more intimate and also less intimate. It's just different. It's a lateral move. They are a type of family. So, yeah, you have to have those open lines of communication, even if it isn't easy to talk about things sometimes. It's yeah. necessary. And it taught me a lot, too, man. Like, it taught me how to talk to people in my life who maybe I'd been avoiding speaking to because you allowed me to talk to you this way. And I'm like, oh, Colton's receptive to that. Right. I can now talk to this person that I've had trouble with for the past few years. Oh, and Jesse's so challenging me to be more open. Now I can be more open with other people in my life, right? So... <laughs> That, it's weird how that friendship sparked something for our band, but all as, as people too. And, and we were having a chat on the way over here, and we, we both want to, you know, grow, grow as people and, and, and always be better, like, you know, men. Yeah, like, like <laughs> better, better people, but also, you know, as the identifiers go, better straight white men who, who, can, who can just, you know, like, uh, we are, are, are people like us, kind of sometimes not don't always make the best decisions because <laughs> they're in positions where they can tell people what to do and that's not always the best thing so yeah we were actually literally talking about this like we're uniquely positioned to be able to change people's minds who maybe need to hear things like speaking to other people other guys who are maybe uninformed about certain things they'll actually listen to us for better yeah. or worse yeah and we can also give people platforms to speak where they might not otherwise be listened to so using our power for good and as artists too you know we're in the public eye I feel like it's almost a responsibility to talk about social issues that maybe other people don't want to talk about right and you just have you're on a stage of yeah. people listening to you it's like it's crazy like sometimes when and our band I think sometimes uh it's it's more suited for us like the quiet like intently listening like some of our songs call for that so 
when they're listening that intently, you're like, whoa, I better have, I better, I better be saying the right things, right? Like, um, I've been challenged on my lyrics, like, not just a handful of times, but it's always been really interesting conversations and uh, really good dialogue. But yeah, even like, even more now that we're getting bigger stages and a bigger audience, I'm just trying to be like way more aware of that too. Like, what am I saying? What's the important topics to be said? Uh, but also being cautious about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, we're we're in a time right now where there's so much social awareness, and I, personally, I think it's great. You know, like very few subjects are taboo now. Marginalized communities now have a voice, and even though we're a group of guys, we we do our best to try and support those voices too. I don't I don't know if, if the message of our band is inherently like social advocacy, but at the same time, it's it isn't not that. Right, like we we talk well about, put. We, <laughs> well no, said, we, we, yeah. we talk about human relatable experiences, and sometimes those topics veer into like romantic relationships, family relationships. Sometimes it's just about struggling with yourself, and sometimes it is about the issues of the world and what we can do to combat them and to and to assist people who need assistance. And yeah, it, it, I don't know. Like lyrically, it doesn't always talk about that but I think it's just the mood the band embodies is about respect and understanding and support openness but like the the, yeah. the title of our last release was we're here for each other so I guess in a certain sense we do embody that that definitely yeah. is like our, our motto of our band a little bit you know uh, we try and be there for one another we we actually all moved in as roommates just recently so that's been nice. another dynamic to yeah. handle and, <laughs> and, and and enjoy it's like been awesome so yeah we have like dream jam space you know just like hey we man you want to you want to play on the piano for like a minute yeah sure. this is great like, we you know. don't need to organize a rehearsal a month in advance because everybody's too busy we can just walk downstairs oh my it's gosh yeah. yeah i was gonna say that must make jamming like super easy <laughs> creatively it has been unparalleled we're like oh we can yeah. write together now yeah. you know, like, it's not this solo thing that you now then come together it's like been a collaborative thing yeah I just I remember living with my old roommate and he also played music so just having that and you just be like hey do you just want to like you know play some music for like an hour or whatever and you just go down and you just jam for an hour and you're like that was awesome yeah. and I like took that for granted because now that he doesn't live there anymore <laughs> I'm like I don't get that and it's just like it's so much harder to do music stuff and, like, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone <laughs> <laughs> Put up a parking lot. <laughs> Thanks, Joni. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. I, I do agree with you guys, though, too. It's um, so many, like, no subject is taboo anymore. So many things are being brought to the forefront of people's attention. Yeah. Um, on the last podcast I did, I actually talked to a 17 year old. Yeah. Um, she's like an up and coming artist and stuff. And it was interesting talking to her about how kids are, like, viewing music and social issues and stuff like that, because she's 17, she's in high school, and just, like, what she was saying is there's just, like, such a destigmatization of, like, mental health issues. Oh, yeah. Like, people aren't afraid to talk about, like, depression. It's getting torn open, for sure, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, like, I, I didn't feel comfortable discussing my mental health issues until I was well into my 20s. Yeah. Right? And, and... Do I wish that maybe I had been more comfortable with that earlier in my life? Maybe, maybe, yeah, but it brought me to where I am. It gave me the journey that I had to go through. And I'm not necessarily complaining about it, but I'm really, really, really happy that kids nowadays have access to way more information than I ever did yeah. and, and way more resources to, to discuss this and deal with this and help them than, than ever before. And that, like, we need to keep going that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a shift in our society that was much needed, for sure. Just being quiet and closed off about it, it's just like... And, and I think music was always that place that was a bit more open about Definitely it, right? my outlet, yeah. yeah. So uh, musicians and artists paved the way for that, probably. And in a lot of ways. In, in many ways, yeah. yeah. Actually, like, okay, if, if we think about this, like, where did most of this conversation start coming from? I'm, I, my first instinct is the internet, specifically, like, Tumblr and whatnot, yeah. right? Those were places where marginalized communities... Punk rock music! Yeah, well, well okay, even, you know, even, even earlier, yeah, you're not wrong, I'm dude. I'm not wrong. No, punk music, that was the counterculture, totally, that yeah. was the voice, right? And it carried over for through generations, and recently, though, yeah, the internet has become such a great so, yeah. place to discuss that. Yeah. So, and 
the art that comes out of it. The art is what resonates with people. You see a photograph that's evocative. You hear a song that inspires you. You see a performance in some way that you're like, or am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Fuck yeah, <laughs> right? You're, you're like, like you, you want the fuck. things that say that fuck good. yes, right? Like, and that's that's kind of what we're aiming to do. To we want people to, to hear what we do, see what we do, and go, fuck yeah, I relate to that. I want more of that, and because it makes me feel alive, it, it speaks to something that I've experienced. That is our aim, and and all the music that has inspired me has been something that when I listen to it, I'm like, holy shit. This, I needed this in my life right now. So. Side note, uh, two artists that I have that reaction to are Benjamin Booker and Matt Corby. Oh, Matt Corby. So I'll just leave that there. <laughs> we can go back to what we were talking about. Oh, these tangents are great, though. Yeah, yeah, no, like like the destigmatization of mental health issues, It's it's been, uh, it's been like a compounding effort of these different internet communities, like speaking, social media has been great for that. Artists making sure that the, the, the art that they're making allows people to relate to those experiences and not feel even further marginalized. And then it becomes like a public conversation and you see it being put into different like government legislation too. Yeah. More funding for mental health care programs, you know, like having more people in schools that are more well equipped to deal with this. Uh, even talking about like having mental health as being a part of like the healthcare system in general has been big too, right? So, like my 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 older male family members who have never talked about their feelings in their life are now like discussing their depression and anxiety and things that they've struggled with, and it's like, oh, it's good, <laughs> it's so good. So yeah, again, I don't know if our music explicitly state talks about that, but it also it does in a lot of ways. Yeah, the song uh, "We're Here for Each Other" is is about just struggling with depression and and. Uh, Basically, the the meaning of that song is like, hey, dude, if you're like really considering like possibly ending your life or something in that vein, like hurting yourself, something, I want you to like literally quit whatever you're doing, take the entire summer off, and like do what you love. Find something you love to do and do it. Like, you know, whether that's like just traveling for like a summer or you know, learning the guitar, like just staying in your bedroom every day, just practicing one thing for like two and a half months straight or whatever, whatever you need to like hyper focus on to get you just in a different headspace. It's just that shift. It's like, I feel so stuck. How do I, how do I get out? It's so hard. Take two months off, take the entire summer off and turn your life around. Yeah. Try to. Try to. And e Try even if you can't afford that time, I think it's about the intention. Right? But dude, like, what, yeah. what time are you affording if you're gonna consider to end your life? No, true. If, if, if people quit your job, like, <laughs> if you're, like don't like move places, like move somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean, different people have have like are, are differently have different access to to that ability. But I think the core tenant of of that song too is recognizing that you aren't alone. Yeah. And and that. Do you mind if I join you? Fo yeah, way. focusing on yourself is not. It's not selfish in the way that you you maybe are, are uh, not selfish in the way that you might. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It isn't. It is selfish, but not in the inherently negative sense. Selfishness just means inward thinking. It's like justified selfishness. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. You can take time for yourself. You oh, and can you need to develop yourself. But when you're when you're when you feel like disempowered, like sometimes as we talked about, small affirmations go a really long way. It's absolutely. It's and huge. yeah. Oh, yeah, the amount of times that I've been pulled out of a glut by somebody recognizing that I needed it and, and, and helping me out has been... Uh, I, I, I can't count the number of times that's happened. So, again, now that I'm feeling a bit better about myself, I, I can recognize it in other people. I can recognize it in you. I can recognize it in our roommates. I can recognize it in my friends and my yeah. family. I'm not always the best at acting on it. And I, I think that... It, a lot of people can say the same thing. You kind of wish that you were more emotionally available for people, but I think that just knowing that you are capable of that and acting on it when you when you feel like you can goes a really long way, right? So, like, tell somebody you love them, even if it is uncomfortable. Somebody might need to hear that. Yeah, tell them they're awesome or, or encourage them to, like, play music. Yeah. That's, something, that's something I've been doing a lot these days is, like, anyone that I meet, I'm just like, what do I want to talk about? with oh, this person music, music. <laughs> like, in, in any way right like do you play music what do you like about music just you know whatever else oh this and this is our buddy Route. hey Route. He, he's an amazing he's, he's a part of our 
friend group community like sister band natural 20 music bassist oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes this place is hard to find and jason, oh, so Jason, we've, we've, he's we've, also in our band we've been fucking for this whole yeah, fucking time he plays guitar and i'm now i'm actually looking for you guys oh we're right here man oh here it is we're on the beanbag <laughs> We're literally at the entrance. Like, I yeah. saw both of you walk in. <laughs> Did you? Oh. Um, I think they're all heading to the stage. You guys are on soon. Yeah, that was. You might probably have your pedal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyways, that, that's the band. They're, they're also the other band that's on right now. Good to see you. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking groove. We're, talk right? we're talking all oh. sorts of concepts. Deep <laughs> concepts. Real concepts. Beanbag bean concepts. Bean concepts. <laughs> bean <bag> concepts. <laughs> we are on a pile of beanbags right now, and it is so comfortable. This oh. episode will be entitled Beanbag Thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's, that's great. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it has been a, a, a great asset for the interview, and yeah. it's been a cozy... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what were, so, uh, yeah, see, man. Good luck, KJ. Have a good show. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, I don't know. Music. Mu well, oh, yeah. People that do music. Right. That's become like my favorite form of social currency. It's like if I find out that somebody <laughs> has any interest in music, it's like, do you want to jam? Do you want to come and see our jam? Do you want me to play a sax lick on your new single? I'll girl? play bass for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the things that I always try and encourage my friends to do as well is just. Anything creative, yeah. Because I've like seen the effects that just doing creative things have had in my life, and like even just this podcast, writing, whatever it may be, just the positivity that that's had in my life. Mm. So I just anything like when my friends are like, "Oh, I'm feeling kind of down," I'm like, "Okay, like what are you doing with your time? Yeah. Like, are you just watching TV? Are you just playing video games? Well, no. Go make something. Do something creative. Like it'll." Elevate your mood, guaranteed. Like <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I do have a thought totally on this. Good. Like I, and this is this is something that I that I've come to like reconcile myself. Is uh, we're uh, we as human beings are like. Oh man, sorry. My train of thought just got completely blown astray. <laughs> uh, uh, where where was I going? Right. We're all right. Okay. We're we as human beings are inherently impermanent, right? Like we don't oh, last yeah. forever. I think we we understand that cognitively, but emotionally it's kind of tough, right? We all aspire to have some kind of legacy, something to combat the impermanence. And even if you accept the impermanence and embrace it, and even come to like really love the fact that, hey, whatever I do maybe doesn't ultimately matter, but it, it still kind of does. We're still all connected. I think that art is, is one of the best ways to combat impermanence. It, it, it allows us to leave an imprint on this world, right? Like we were here. I made a song. I made a song that people listen to and they talk to each other and they sing to each other. I made a painting that will last beyond my death. I I, I, I wrote a book that people can read. Oh man. Right? You're like speaking some good stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> like so the, honestly as an artist that's what drives me. I wanna it, it maybe it's satisfying the ego and in fact I'm sure that's entirely what it is, but yeah tiny little insignificant me wants to do something of significance and for me that's music so that, that is the one thing and, and I know I keep saying the one thing I've been thinking about or the one thing I've been doing but um, it's like the one thing that's gonna last right and and it's crazy when you listen to the Beach Boys and you're like that music is amazing but that's not even like that old of music and then you listen to like Lead Belly and you're like that music's amazing and that's not that, even that old that's not even that old and you listen to Gregorian <laughs> chant music you're like that's so beautiful, and that's that's getting pretty old. <laughs> I but mean, it still exists. But yeah. like, it's still around, and people still listen to that. Florence the Machine is so inspired by Gregorian chant, like in her music, it's unbelievable. Florence Welch also. Can we talk about her for a second? Another oh shout out. God. Oh, Florence, if you're listening <laughs> to shout this, out we love Flo. you. <laughs> oh, we also got to shout out our our homegirl Cher. Cher, <laughs> we've Cher. We've performed Cher many a time. We love Cher. <laughs> oh yeah, she's great. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it's the one thing that I can do and I can write these songs that have the potential to live on well beyond my years. And, and if I can craft a song or two and, 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 and we can craft the songs, like it's not just a, a soul thing, right? It's like the, that's why I Am The Mountain is such a band-oriented yeah. project. Uh, if, we, if we can craft these songs that, you know, that Calgary could listen to or Canada or, or beyond, like that's... I don't know. That's that's becoming the most important thing in the world to me. So that's 
leaving a legacy. It, you know, yeah, and just creating a piece of art that that people can be inspired by, like way, way down the road, right? Like that has meaning that still lasts way, way on down the road. So. <laughs> oh yeah. So we've got a baby joining us right now. My ovaries are exploding. It's amazing. The baby baby photo shoot. Um, so a, ten, a tangent from 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 that. Yeah. Uh, we are in the digital age right now. Yes. Most of what we do is uploaded to the internet and stored in servers, and that is kind of what are what is keeping things permanent right now. But like. In the event that <laughs> that the servers that stores our collective humanity go kaput, who's running the internet right now? Like, who's actually who's who's running it? <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people. We don't need to get into that. I'm gonna get all political here. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, the the physical media is becoming like one of the only true ways to like preserve what you're doing, which is why I think. Film photography is making a comeback. Why vinyl, fi records. vinyl records vinyl are making records. a comeback. Uh, why why making films on film is because or, or have, having a comeback. So I, I I'm, I'm going to drop a name here, and I apologize if I hurt my back trying to pick it up. I was working with Howard Billerman a little while ago, and uh, I'm the producer of Arcade Fire, <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about how. Really, vinyl and tape are the only true ways to make sure that music is preserved for future generations. Because even in the past 15 years, the software and the hardware that we record and and listen to music on has changed so fundamentally. So, yeah, if you record on tape and you press it to vinyl, you're basically guaranteeing that it will be more or less timeless. And you know how to make it even more timeless? You press it to gold vinyl. Oh, and then you shoot. send it to outer space. Voyager style. <laughs> and you're like, that music is literally in outer space. That like we've chosen to send music into outer space. Going to last forever. Do you remember what was even on that? Yeah, Beethoven. 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 Oh, yeah. what a representative of humanity. Absolutely. I'll take like, it. That, that's, that's, that's a human too. being. That's, yeah. like, that's a human being who made music. Like, dude, I've been reading a little bit about the philosophy of Beethoven. Es muss sein. It must be. All things must be. All things are transient, but all things are. <laughs> all things are. It's. It's are recursive. It's very Nietzsche-esque. Like these Germans, man. They. they okay. Anyway. <laughs> also, a book that. Jesse and I are both really inspired by a uh, book recommendation if we're just if you're writing like a list at this point <laughs> um, the, the lightness the, the unbearable, unbearable lightness of being. being by Milan Kundera my favorite book on the planet it's, it's inspired a lot of like my personal writing and whatnot so anyway it's, that's, that's what the book is about it's about it's about impermanence and about recursion but do you know what's also really important Bean sharing art. Sharing well, art. Well, I'm being big chairs, but, <laughs> but sharing art. And so this is art that we've found that's like... Important know, to we, us. We yeah. wouldn't say this if it wasn't the most incredible art out there. You know? Yeah, as we were saying, we all kind of, even if we don't explicitly say it, we all try and seek those things that make us say, holy fuck, right? Yeah. Adrenaline junkies <laughs> want to jump out of a plane because that's what inspires them. Hikers want to get that thrill of standing on top of a mountain, right? Artists want to play in front of an audience that receives their music and, and, and reciprocates that feeling they, they put into it. Listeners want to feel that intention from the artist. We're all seeking those moments that inspire us. And I guess, yeah, we, we're talking about art that inspires us. Milan Kinder is one of those artists that does more than almost any other writer for me. You have to take notes when you read the book. Uh, like you, it's, it's recommended, actually. Yeah, it's, it's dense. <laughs> You're just like, I've didn't think that was a thought in human thought, but <laughs> it is, and that's great to be aware of now. Yeah. Some, uh, we're, we're also joined here by Dylan Pache, our Hello. trombonist. <laughs> we, yeah, all of our, all of our members nice are... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're right at the front entrance, so yeah. everybody's coming by. Yeah, it uh, seems like everybody's rolled by. Are, are you on soon? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to play a few songs with Natural 20. Uh, AYE's on at 7. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So you're here oh, all wow. night. Yeah, cool. exactly. <laughs> so, hi, Gina. So Dylan started playing trombone with our band like just in the past year, I guess. Tomorrow is going to mark a year of my return to yeah! music. East Town Get Down. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. Was that your first show with us? With uh, AYE. Oh, with AYE. Yeah, yeah. Right. My return to music. Oh. Yeah. And that's huge, Dylan. It's a very like, familiar yeah. story. We were yeah, just talking we were just about talking that. Yeah, we were just talking about Jesse's return to music. Do you want to share a bit about that? 
that return? Yeah, so uh, I graduated music school and uh, just with my living situation, I couldn't really practice my instruments too much. I was living in a small apartment, brass is really loud, so I kind of took a, a little hiatus. And then, yeah, exactly a year ago, um, these guys shot me a message, guys from Mind in the Mountain, and uh, I started talking to a guy named Jahimba. He's uh, AYE and the Extraordinary Gentleman. And so good. They both started getting me back into playing. It's been a year now, and it's been a crazy year. Done, played Folk Fest, played with the Bar Brothers, played with the dudes. Uh, just done so much stuff that I couldn't have imagined doing before. Uh, before playing with you guys again. So yeah, it's, it's been it. a great year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tons of fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, one thing that I have noticed during, during this interview, though, is like everybody is like the nicest people here. <laughs> Everybody's just so friendly. Like <laughs> again, it's that collaborative spirit, right? Yeah. And it, and it's the community that they have created. Yeah, you know, it's it's not like it's not like an, an expectation or even, but it's just like everyone just knows. It's been very like, natural, yeah. not forced. You just like, this is what people want to do, so they do it. That's those are the, the values that they embody. So no wonder it's so evident. Yeah. People are just happy. Right? Yeah, I agree. Why do you think stuff like this is important in Calgary's music scene? Oh man. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> go talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye, Dylan. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you have a good yeah. show. <laughs> so uh, I love Calgary with all my heart. It's it's my home. We really do. We're gonna try and stay here as long as possible. For it's a. Uh, you you, for those of you in the know, you probably are aware that like most like successful Calgarian artists aren't successful in Calgary. <laughs> they usually go elsewhere to find their success. Uh, Toronto. That's, yeah, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, elsewhere. And I don't blame them. There are more opportunities yep. in these other places. Uh, Calgary's ge geographically quite isolated. Our closest large urban center is Edmonton, which is three hours away. And then aside from that, we have Right <laughs> oh, we have Regina and we have Vancouver, right, yeah. which are both seven to ten or more hours away, yeah. and and that that yeah puts us in a unique position. We're 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 very much like the conduit to the mountains for a lot of people that come through us. We're we're seen as like Canada's oil capital, which in many ways we are, and that's become our identity. We're the Calgary Stampede, we're Banff, and we're oil. And being an artist here has never really been. You say you're an artist from Calgary, people don't really know what that means because the arts community here has always been very underground. Things like Market Collective in the past 10, 15 years have started to really radically change the identity of Calgarian artists. Uh, they literally changed bylaws. Yeah. Like literally changing the government structure, like events like this, yeah. right? Like, Realizing yeah. the importance. So being an artist in Calgary now has gone from you doing it on the side while working another job. I mean, a lot of artists still have to do that to like yeah. actually being able to be visible in public and, and renowned with what you're doing and then start making connections outside of Calgary. like. As a musician in Calgary, it's a small pond, but if you're a small fish, you look a lot bigger in comparison. As Dylan was saying, he's got all of those opportunities just by merit of being here and being a capable, well-respected player. player. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm the same way. Like, I've got a lot of opportunities outside of Calgary just being a by capable nature, bass player. being a capable bassist, and somebody needs it, and here we go. If I were in Toronto... And kind human beings. Shut the hell up. <laughs> how, dare, how dare you say that to me? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, Market Collective is is really really important for that because it validates a lot of what these artists are doing. Before they would have had to by themselves market their their wares. You know, like try and find a client. Base. It's a natural audience of artists. Yeah, the people, people yeah. who are going to support you. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, like the people who care about your music because they also know they've yeah. like gone through Absolutely. this struggle. They're yeah. also trying to promote themselves and get them so. They're not only selling necklaces, but they play piano at home too, right? Like yeah. they are musicians too, and, and musicians are artists as well too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the thing about Market Collective that not a lot of people know, it's the longest running all ages venue in Calgary. I guess t that's technically true. There is true. no other venue that is longer running than Market Collective. And it, the venue moves, but it's every year had multiple uh, all ages shows. And that's, you know, they do get, they get young musicians up on the stage. I played on the stage when I was 17 years old and, and 18 years old and just barely starting, right? Like yeah. so. 19 years old, one of my first public shows outside of high school, Market Club. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gave us our start. It gave us a, a, a community of people who cared about us as people, about our music, about our lyrics, um, cared about what we were doing and wanted to support that. And 
we took that community and, and, and grew with it. And we've, we've been growing our band. For, like, I've had the name Eye on the Mountain for seven years now. That our band has been together for about four or so. And so, like, you know, with, with the help of Market Collective and... Uh, Base Bus. Oh, Base Bus has been great too. All the yeah. small festivals we mentioned before, um, even venues, even live music venues, you know? Koi, like, what Koi. an amazing yeah. hub for new musicians. Another all ages venue. Yeah, you need accessible music venues in a city, and those are becoming increasingly rare. So we gotta, like, really support the ones that are good and that we have. So it's stuff like this, again, that, that validates the efforts that all of these artists have been putting into their craft to basically justify their existence. It sucks to have to do that, but you do. Also, so, Market yeah. Collective pays their musicians really well. Way more than most places. So that's another yeah. thing they're doing, right? Yeah. They're not only hosting, they're paying us more. Like, that's, yeah. you can't ask for much no, more. No, you really can't. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that's really missing in like today's society and today's culture is because there is so much access to music and content, podcasts, for example, <laughs> people almost expect it for free. You know? oh, okay. If, no, you're totally right, man. I, and you know what? Every band would play this stage for free. They would. Yeah. Because it's such a great show. Yeah. yeah. But Marcus, like, no, we're going to pay you $250 to also play. Yeah. Which because may not seem like that much, you. but it's it oh, is. Oh, dude, in the music scene, that's, that's a lot. For a gig, that's awesome. Yeah. Art, artists are being paid like for a festival gig. That's literally the same amount that they were 30 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> or less. Like, it's it's so yeah. Like like, the music industry nowadays is less about selling the music as it is selling the brand. Right, your music is your advertisement now. Which we're working on. We're working out. <laughs> You're doing a great job. But again, that's something that we are working on. We we've come to recognize this. So. We're a brand, right? And that's what we're selling. We need to make sure our music is world class, but we also need to look the part and have people feel connected to us. That's a whole other conversation, but that's the music industry nowadays. So getting paid for playing music while ultimately the goal, yeah, it's kind of not become the motivator anymore. Yeah. It can't be because you won't get that. <laughs> we found good musicians who we really enjoy playing music with and are starting to write with and collaborate more with and got to we're holding on to that for sure and and also enjoying the progression we've been making yeah. so it's been it's been really awesome and we're going on tour this summer so we're going to like we're going to tour all western canada and playing all the major cities and whatnot and we're taking out a 1978 gmc rv it's beautiful and it's just it's such such an amazing time to sit in the rv travel with your buds play music you know just kick back relax like when your life is music and you're like living for music like that's I think that's I, I I'm really looking forward to it. Oh man, me too. Like it'll be hard work. Yeah. But oh it's, yeah, for it's, sure. You're driving long hours and and playing tons of shows, but yeah. it's like that's I, I really enjoy doing that and haven't been able to do that full time ever. So yeah. if you can do that for a month in the summer, like you know we all work and whatnot. But. Yeah, uh, that like again, I think this is gonna validate us in a lot of ways. It's gonna justify why we're doing it. If if the tour, if for whatever even like. Uh, you can't really quantify it, but if we deem the, the tours being successful, I feel like that'll allow us to feel compelled to like expand it next year and keep going and keep, I don't know, making well, material keep growing. Find that validation through the tour. Exactly, sure. right? That's, like, we're hope hopeful for that. Yeah, it's, it's we're, uh, we're also going to make sure that we enjoy our time, like have days off, play some disc golf, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, like, that kind of stuff's important too, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, Everyone's so busy in life, and it's weird to say, but it's just everyone is. Like, I'm like, oh, nobody can be bu as busy as me. Everyone's as busy as me. Like, everyone's as busy as everybody. And so, to take time off to just spend with your bandmates and play music, like, it's just, a special time. And again, to take time off to like go to a show when there are a near infinite number of things yeah. to do, right? Infinite like, number of shows, sometimes. right? So. Yeah, if we, if people show, like, even if five people come to our shows, it'd be like, those five people we connected with, if 500 people come to our show, those 500 people we connected with, I think. And that thing's yeah, so, yeah. it's so healing, too. It is very yeah, healing. It's very healing. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, music definitely brings people together, whether it be at a festival or just a show, like, or even if you're just listening to it, you feel that connection with the musicians, you know? So, yeah. it's definitely a special thing that 
musicians can do in just bringing people together. So. That's that's what we aim for. It's arguably the oldest art form, so yeah. we're yeah. just trying to keep it going. Yeah. Healing for us and others, hopefully that's the goal, right? And Jesse, it's kind of a, a, a cheesy, cliche thing to say, but I really kind of believe in it. It's like, we, we just want to feel the music up there. <laughs> we just We just are up there feeling our music and feeling the music in general and hope that the audience feels it too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Natural 20 is starting. We might go listen to them now. Yeah, hey, we, sure. we have a little gift for you. This is our CD. We're here for each other. Oh, wow. So, uh, you can check it out. Thank and you very much. we'll have some new music soon. We're, we're, we're recording some new stuff right now. Hopefully going to have it out. So I, we don't really want to put a time on it, but it's, yeah. it's getting close. It's yeah, coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. <laughs> awesome. Uh, any final things you guys just want to say? Or? Um... Yeah, just uh, another like weird mantra thing. Like, uh, like everything is art, right? Would you agree? Like, yeah. just like everything that exists is art, and uh, and would you not agree that art is music, right? So, art is so, music is art, definitely. So would you not agree that music is everything? Oh. <laughs> A circle, right? So I've been ha- I've been thinking about that. Like music is everything. It is. It like truly is. To me, at least, my entire life's music. I'm a music elementary music teacher. Yeah. I I work at music festivals. I play in a band. Like I, I talk about. Like I said, I talk with music about every with everyone I meet. So that's been exciting for me. Everything's music. Uh, yeah, anything? Any final thoughts for you? I feel like I, I I poured a lot of my soul into this podcast. Yeah, I appreciate. I, how that. do we how do we cap it off? Now, I, I, basically, no, just like sincerely thank you for taking the yeah. time to, to give us a platform here. It's like all musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so thank you, and and uh, for the listeners, thank you for for listening through this. Hopefully, you've learned something about us, and <laughs> like, don't feel afraid to like drop us a line in any way, like. We just want to hear from you. We want to chat with you about whatever's important, and that's what our music is about, ultimately. So thank you so much. Yeah. Coolest thing you can do is check out the Instagram. <laughs> that's that's our main outlet. Oh, right there. I, it's my other art outlet, right? Like it's <laughs> I put so much time and effort into it. It's weird, um, but it's I am the Mountain Music. So cool. Yeah. I have all the links in the Sweet. episode notes and stuff, Aww, so people can thanks. find it awesome. easy. Well, thank you so much. This was much. a nice beanbag. This was a really nice yeah. chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Market Collective and. Weekend. The Weekenders for Life. The Weekenders for Life for providing the bean bags. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I've been
take you by your hand Who's gonna stay with you in the ending I told you, I'm telling you If you liked this episode of the podcast, why not leave a review? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. For up-to-date information on the podcast, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us at Froggy Style Productions. That's Frog, the letter E, Style Productions. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.